Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome to a brand new video on Python file input and output. Let's get started. Now, first thing first, when you're dealing with file input and output is you need a directory. You need a directory from which you are getting your files, where you can read your files and write your files to. And that directory you can figure out from the OS module. So go ahead and open up any interpreter you're using. I'm using PyCharm for almost all of my Python videos. And at the very bottom of your screen, you're going to see to do Python console and terminal. Go ahead and open up Python console. This will make our Python programming for this video much, much easier. So go ahead and over here, import OS. Now OS is a Python module that comes pre-installed whenever you install Python. And it gives you a variety of functions dealing with your operating system. And that includes file directory. All right. Now, once you've imported OS, we want to figure out what directory is Python reading from. When we want to open up a file and we specify the file name, where is Python going to search for that file name? So the function that we're going to call is going to be os.getCurrentDirectory. And the way you write that is os.getCWD. And that stands for get current working directory. So go ahead and say that. Hit enter and we get user slash avinash slash documents code Python YouTube. Awesome. So that means that any single file that I create in my current working directory, which is code slash Python YouTube, that will be where my file should be stored. Now, if you're on Windows, guys, one key thing you want to note is that Windows users will have their slashes as double backslash like that instead of a forward slash. So that's one very key thing to note. Now, let's say that your current working directory is something else. Let's say it's maybe in your downloads, maybe it's in your applications, doesn't matter, but we want to change it. So on a Mac, what you do is you'd call the function OS dot change directory. Okay. OS dot chdir. So go ahead and say OS dot change directory. And then for your path name, again, if you're in a Mac, you're going to use one forward slash. If you're on windows, you're going to use double backslash. So for Mac, it would look something like this. Let's say I want to change my directory from this to code slash another folder. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this command C copy this in. And then instead of Python YouTube, I'm going to go ahead and say another folder, let's say weather. Okay. So I'm going to change my directory from Python YouTube to a new directory. This would work for Mac Hit enter fantastic. And now if I say OS get current directory, I now have my current directory. Awesome. It's now changed to weather. Again, if you're on windows, what you'd probably do is copy this, paste it. And again, Mac users, please don't copy this, but I'd probably do something like this. C colon double backslash. Okay. Because, um, in Python, the first backslash is considered as an escape character. So double backslash signifies that you're actually using a backslash C colon double backslash. And then maybe your USR bin, whatever you're dealing with. It's just the normal directory that you would follow. Maybe you want to change it to, let's say over here, windows, um, system, something along the lines, wherever you want to store it, just go ahead and put that entire working directory, hit enter, and then your directory should change. Again, Windows, double backslash, Mac users, one forward slash. Awesome job. So now that you've changed your directory, I'm going to go ahead and change it back to my normal directory. And a quick way I can do this is os.change there. And instead of specifying the whole path, I can go ahead and say the parent directory. And I can specify the parent directory by saying dot dot slash. And then from the parent directory, I want to go back to my YouTube. So Python YouTube. Okay. So if I hit enter, if I now say OS get current working directory, I'm back to Python YouTube. Basically what I did was I said, whatever my current directory is, I want to go one up. So I want to go to my parent directory of that. My parent directory was code. And then from code, I went back into Python YouTube. Anyways, fantastic job. Now you should have your current directory as the one you want. Once you have that, the next step is to go ahead and create a text file. So on windows, you will have, I believe notepad on Mac. It's going to be text edit. Go ahead and open up text edit or any sort of, um, text editing application and go ahead and select new document. And then over here again, for Mac users, you're going to change your format to make plain text so that Mac doesn't save it as a rich text format on windows. It should normally save as .txt. Now over here, I'm just going to go ahead and write a couple of lines. Um, let's go ahead and just write some gibberish. Uh, my name is Avi. I am uh, 17 years old. 
fantastic let's go ahead and save this i'm going to go ahead and save it as python test or python text.txt again please note that over here your unicode utf8 should be awesome and then uh, we're going to go ahead and save where we're going to save it in the directory we just created or saved into so go ahead i'm going to go into code and inside of code um i'm going to go into let me expand this inside of code i'm going to go into uh it's not showing up let me go over here code python youtube save so now in my directory i have um the python text saved i'm going to go ahead and save if i go to my finder over here my code directory python youtube i should now have python text and it is a plain text file fantastic so that's exactly what we wanted to do we added two lines of text over here and now to check that the directory has been created we can go ahead and call the function os.listdir so go ahead and say os.listdir and then to get the current directory that you're in you can just say dot and that gets me the three files test.py python text.txt and idea awesome so now that we have our text file created we got our directory working now we can go ahead and open up the file so the open up function in python is the open itself so we're going to go ahead and say my file is equal to open and then our file name and in this scenario since we already have our current directory set all we have to do is specify our python i believe we saved it as python text dot txt hit enter and now my file has all of the data of python text dot txt now the next thing we can go ahead and do is read this file when you read a file in python you have to store that value to another variable so we can go ahead and say either um variables equal to my file dot read or we can go ahead and print it out so let's go ahead and just say print file or print my file dot read all right hit enter we get my name is avi i am 17 years old awesome job so hopefully you guys saw whatever you wrote down in your text file over here again i wrote down those two lines i read my file and it printed out awesome job now another way we can do this is we can go ahead and use a concept called read lines and what read lines does is it stores every single line so this is one line this is a second line separately so the way this works is let's go ahead and open up this file again so let's go ahead and say my file dot close awesome and then we're going to go ahead and use the up arrow key to get to my file equals open python text.txt and then we can go ahead and say my file dot read lines so what read lines does is it stores every single one of my lines separately so my name is avi slash n again if you guys don't know what slash n is slash n is the new line escape character it basically distinguishes that okay after this avi go ahead and go to the next line over here and then it distinguishes my name is avi i am 17 years old awesome job so that's two ways you can go ahead and read files in python you can either read it normally just say my file dot read or you can go ahead and store every single line separately as we did with read lines great the next step is to go ahead and write the files so we'll be able to read it the next step is writing and once you write or once you read a file you have to go ahead and close it so let's go ahead and say my file dot close so we can open it up with the right parameters now when you're writing to a file it's very similar to how you read a file except you need to specify one more property so i'm going to go ahead and go to my my file equals open python dot txt again the way i'm doing this is by the up and down arrow keys okay so over here i'm going to use my up arrow key get to my file equals python text dot txt and now if i want to write to a file i can't just say this i need to specify comma and then i'm going to go ahead and specify w the w key means that i'm going to write to this file instead of read if i want to both write and read i specify w plus but for now we only want to say w that i'm going to go ahead and write to the file so my file is equal to is equal to open python text at txtw hit enter and now the next thing is to go ahead and write to this file so my file dot write and then i'm going to go ahead and specify some text um let's go ahead and just say hello world and then let's specify a new line so that the cursor goes to the next line my file dot write hello world let's go ahead and hit enter that means that we have entered this into our text file it's been written and now we can go ahead and close our file so my file dot close now if we take a look at our text edit there's nothing there right now but if i go ahead and open it up again python text hello world so when you use the write function guys the write function overwrites all of your current text so whatever i had before hi avi i'm 17 years old 
that got rewritten and now all that exists is hello world. So again, sometimes when you're dealing with files, you might want to just append. I have some text. I'm going to add some more text to it. How do I not rewrite? And the way you do that is through the append method. Again, append is another parameter you'd pass over here instead of W. So let's go ahead and close this file, myfile.close. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is open it up again. So my file, let's go ahead and open up over here. And then instead of specifying W, we're going to go ahead and specify A. And A stands for append. So instead of writing to the file, we're pending to the file. We want to keep what's there, but we want to add some more. So once we've uh, created it, we can go ahead and say my file dot write again, except this time when we write stuff, it will not overwrite it. So this is some new content. Again, specify the slash n so that we don't um, write continuously. Hit enter. That's 26 characters. If you were wondering what the 26 and 13 mean, they're the number of characters in this sort of text that we just added. And then once we've done that, we can go ahead and close it. My file dot close. And if you go back to our finder or we can just open up over here, hello world, this is some new content. Awesome. So in this scenario, when you use the A key, instead of overwriting all of our content, it just appended to the next line. Fantastic job, guys. This was the basics of file input and output. We covered OS functions, how to change your directory, get the current working di directory, see all of the listings in our current directory. And then we were able to read, write, and append to files. Fantastic job, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.